Hey guys, thanks for stopping down at Pete's Garage. This is a continuation tearing down this Yamaha 1100cc four stroke dual overhead cam engine. Let's tear this baby down. First, I'm going to remove the cover of the oil tank. Take a quick look inside there. That looks alright. Now you can see I have the wiring harness out of the way and the fuel rail disconnected. I'm just going to pull the fuel rail up like that. And it's on a clip. I'm just going to disconnect this hose. I'm just going to pull the fuel rail out of the way. Now I got a good shot at my intake manifold here and my valve cover. I'm going to have the intake plenum loose. I should be able to pop this right out. Now as you take something apart, here's something that's worth noting. Right inside the intake manifold, as I took out the plenum, there's oil. Oil in all, all four intake runners. Not sure if that's normal, but I would think not. You don't want oil in there, so that could be a clue. Now I can carefully remove our remove the valve cover here, and maybe, just maybe, I might start to see damage. Okay, now with my valve cover off, I'm going to take note of a few things. First, the intake side of the engine. This is the front of the engine, the timing gears are on the front of the engine, and even though this is the rear of the craft, this is the rear of the jet ski, this is the front, the engine, so the engine is mounted backwards, so this is the front of the engine intake side. So I'm going to look at my caps on my cam and you can see here I for intake number one intake and they're labeled here's the right and here's the left so the caps have got a right and a left same thing with the other side left and right so if these are uh, th these are both right on the right side of the engine and these are both the left side how do you not get them mixed up? Well you see the Part number on this one, part number is readable this way, part number on this one is readable this way. So you just have to note which one goes on which side. You don't want to mix up your cam caps. The cam caps have to go in the exact same location. Okay, That's very important. So I know where my cam caps are. I know my intake side. I know my exhaust side, right and left caps. These can only go in one spot. And I look at my timing gears here. And while the chain is very tight, there is a tensioner. Here's the tensioner right here. This is a tensioner. And if you were able to see down here, which I will try and do, there is a little shoe in there that this is pushing against to tighten up this timing chain to make it nice and tight. So I'm going to loosen up this tensioner here. Loosen this up. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to mark Actually, before I take that off, I'm going to put a mark so I know where these teeth on my camshaft are to line up. And I know it's tough to see. I think I'm going to take off this oil reservoir to make it easier. So my next task is to mark the timing so I have it right back to where it was when I put it back together. Now here's a, a quick note, and I did this just to help myself. There is no doubt manufactured timing marks on each timing gear to correspond with the crankshaft. However, if I do not move the crankshaft and leave the valves where they were, I can put these cams exactly back where they were. Now you can see I put these white marks on there. The white mark on the right is on a tooth and the white marks on the left are on two teeth. So I know when I put this back together and if I put the timing back exactly where it was those two teeth, that tooth, the white tooth on the right, should line up with the groove on the left. That's how I make sure I get the timing back where it was. I also, on top here, put some timing marks on top of the cams so I make sure that I put the cams back in the same position uh, where they were when they started. So I'm going to gently release the tension on that tensioner. 
I'm going to release that a little bit at a time. Make sure the cams don't move. If they do, I want to note the positions where they are when after it moves. So I'm going to slowly remove that. Once I get those cams off of there, I can slide the head off. I can, I can unbolt the head and take the head off. Okay, I have the camshafts out. Now, a couple things just noticing uh, that, that right off the bat that are, that are good. First of all, I look at the oil that's in here and there's no coolant in the oil which is a good sign, which means no coolant got through the oil passageways on top of the head. The second thing I'm noticing is the journals where the camshafts ride, there's no scoring. So none of the coolant got in there and ruined any of the cam journals. There's a, this is a three valve engine, uh, three valves per cylinder, two intake, one exhaust, I believe. Yeah, two intake, one exhaust. And, um, that's what it looks like so far. Now, I can unbolt my head, but I'm I'm hoping to find a head gasket. If that's the case, it's going to save me another six or seven hours of work. If not, I'll just have to pull the whole engine out of the, uh, the wave runner itself. But so far, it's not looking too bad. Let's see what happens when I get this head off. So this is where I am. Uh, I decided to take the engine out. Once I took the exhaust manifold out, uh, took the exhaust manifold off, it was clear that it was very easy to take out. There's only four bolts holding the engine in. There was nothing really connecting the, the uh, engine to the drive, the jet drive, except for a fast coupling, which doesn't have any fasteners at all. I put it on a hoist, took it out of there in about 15 minutes. Much easier to work on when it's on a tabletop. Now, a couple things to note, which is pretty neat. It has a water-cooled exhaust. These ports around the exhaust openings here. So the exhaust comes out here and water goes through the head and goes through the... Uh, exhaust manifold and the exhaust the muffler and everything to keep it cool. I did find some moisture and oil in the exhaust pipe so more and more it's looking like it's a cracked head clean on top but at least I'm at a point now where I can take the head off and I can look at my my uh, gasket to see how it looks so let me just lift this head up Now, let's take a close look. See what we have for a head gasket. The thing that's pretty neat is the engine studded. You got these studs to hold the head on instead of bolts, which is pretty cool. So, let's see if I can break this gasket. On top of the gasket, it looks pretty clean. Uh, in between each of the cylinders, the gasket is looking pretty good take a look at that I'll show you what I'm talking about the land part in between the cylinders looks like it's pretty clean that, that looks like it was not compromised turn it over and we'll take a look hmm now this is a little puzzling now here's between style four, number four and three you can see how that area looks like it's compromised in between it's shiny when it's shiny between there means that the, the seal might have broke same thing here on this one, but between the first and second one, that looks like it didn't get compromised. So maybe it's just a leak between here, maybe it's just a head gasket. Maybe. I don't know. Not sure yet. So let me put the head gasket aside. Now we can take a closer look. Let me change the camera angle and we'll take a look inside here. So now what I'm looking for is any evidence of cracking and it really doesn't look like much of it at all. It doesn't look like any, which is bad news, which is going to require more investigation. So, let's take a quick look here. This is how this works. This block, the coolant flows around the outside of the cylinders to keep them cool, goes up into the head, uh, goes out through the exhaust, uh, through the exhaust to keep the exhaust cool, and you got a water return looks like this is a water return, or this is the water that feeds into the exhaust. So if the head's on here, you got a pipe here that goes into the exhaust. And uh, the top of the cylinders look the same. So they're all burning evenly, so it doesn't look like it was a single cylinder that was the problem. They're all pretty even. Uh, I don't see any cracks anywhere in, in these bore liners. Here, I don't see anything positive. 
So, at this point, the options are I have to really tear this, and since I have it this far apart and you have it out, you might as well do the whole thing. Take the crank out, look at the bearings, make sure everything's fine on the bottom end. If you're, if you're this far, do the whole thing. It's worth the extra work. That's one thing. So I'll, so I'll continue on with the bottom end of the engine, and then I'll have to take the head apart, look inside all of the ports for the intake and exhaust, see if there's any cracks in there. i got to find a crack. Somehow, coolant was getting into all of these cylinders evenly. And since it doesn't look like it, the head gasket was, was sealed pretty good here, it looks like it might be the head. That's what it's looking like right now. But so far, there's nothing definitive. The gasket didn't tell me anything. Looking at the bottom of the head didn't tell me anything. Let me show you that real quick, the bottom of the head. Here's the head. You can see the three intake valves, two exhaust valves, and this cylinder, and they all look fairly even. This one's a little more washed out than the others. And, well, no, this one's a little more washed out, so this one might have a little more coolant in it. So, maybe another clue. Maybe a clue is this cylinder had more, more uh, water in it than this one. This one had some water in it. This one doesn't look like it had any water in it. There's no cracks around the outside here, around the water jackets here. Doesn't look like anywhere around there. Hmm. So, water. Water could have poured... If the head gasket was compromised, water could have poured in from any one of these water jackets into the cylinder and, and into the cylinder, into the bore. Again here, this one could have been leaking. A lot of water in there. So I guess what I'll have to do is take this head apart and have a check for cracks. Look inside each one. And then take the, take the block apart. Look for cracks inside the, the uh, bores themselves. So there we have it so far. Lots and lots of questions, not very many answers. Doesn't look like it was a head gasket, but it could have been. Possible. More likely than not. Didn't see anything on the head that looked very obvious in the way it cracks. If there were a crack because of freezing or because water got cracked in there, uh, it would definitely show up. I would see a crack. I would hope so. Something that was as severe as it was. Block. Doesn't look like there's anything wrong. However, since I'm this far into it, I'm going to take it all apart. Look at the bottom end, just make sure it's all right inside, clean it up, and then we're going to put it back together. That's going to be my plan of action. Like I said, I've never really built this particular engine before, but I'm following the standard process I would normally follow when I build every engine. Inspect it as if it were just any other engine I'm building. Follow this, the, uh, the process, put it together, and we'll see how it works out. So far, interesting, interesting project so far. I hope you're enjoying it, and thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.